Sex Talk. Hi, and welcome back to the Sex Talk. My name is Mo, and I am your host here. I wanted to do an episode about one of the main reasons I got into being um, a sex therapist, uh, sex educator, um, and that is I want to talk about sexuality and shame. So shame is why I got started. Um, I didn't know it at the time that that was the word that is best used to describe how our society um, envisions sexuality and sex, how our society has sort of been trained around it. So I wanted to sort of talk about that today. What is shame? First of all, let's define what shame is. Shame essentially is, and it's funny because for a really long time I didn't understand what shame actually was and I understood what guilt was. I, I knew what it meant to feel guilty about something, like feeling bad or feeling really um, you know, sad that you did something or sad that you hurt someone, but really guilt is about feeling taking it out on yourself, feeling responsible. Well, shame is a little bit different. There's elements of guilt in shame, absolutely. But the bigger piece of shame is that you want, to, you know that it's something that you're shameful about because it's something that you want to hide from people. So maybe it makes you humiliated. Maybe it makes you extremely embarrassed whatever it was, maybe it was a past event, maybe it was um, getting tattoos on your arm. Um, for, for me, um, my tattoos were a form of shame. I realized because every time I would go home, I would put on a shirt and cover them up because I knew that my mother didn't like them, that she might say something about them. And so I had a lot of shame about the, ta the tattoos that I wanted to get for myself. And so when I started to realize what shame is, unpacking what it means, it's anything that you wanna hide from the world. And it's different. Sometimes, for example, going to my mother's, I wanted to hide my tattoos. Maybe when going to work for a long time, I wanted to also hide my tattoos. Like I knew that there was I was trying to be someone else or present myself as someone else. And so th that was that was a clear indicator that there was some shame in, involved in, in that activity or in a past behavior or in something that happened. So that's kind of a way to define shame. It's something that you really that you want to hide from someone. Um, you, we talk a lot about, or not that we talk about it here, but I hear and I'm engaged in conversations with lots of people in my work and just in my communities around body shame. So we can really easily understand what body shame is. It's that desire to want to hide parts of our body, right? So. Uh, you see like people covering up, you know, extra weight. Um, we have so, we put so, such an emphasis in our society on thinness. So people cover up their bodies to hide extra weight. And that's actually kind of supported. Like if you don't show your body off, and you know, if you can't, if, if you got it flaunted, if you don't got it, make sure you cover it up. I mean, that's really perpetuated in our society. So our society validates us for feeling shameful. Yes, you're supposed to feel ashamed about that. You should be covering that up. So body shame is a really great example of something that we that something that we can feel shame about and that a lot of people feel shame about. Um, for the other thing I want to say about body shame is I used to notice it wasn't really about body shame. Maybe it was partially about body shame, but also like in the morning when I would get dressed for work, when I 
had to show up for like a nine to five job, which has been almost 15 years since I've had to do that. But when I would go to work, deciding what to wear often brought up shame. Wear this, don't wear that. Oh, Mo, you can't wear that. Like, who? you can't wear that. That looks crazy. And I will tell you that there have, that has been something that has been validated. It's been perpetuated by friends, by family, by partners. I had a partner once who basically told me that I dress like a crazy person. So we get all of these messages and once we get those messages, we create stories about ourselves that we then in turn internalize and the shame therefore becomes greater exponential. And sometimes we don't even realize we're doing it. Like going over to my mother's house, my parents' house and covering up my tattoos, almost like automatically. We don't even realize we're doing it. But the, the essence of shame is we wanna hide this piece of ourselves because it hurts too much when other people acknowledge it. So shame is something that is about us that we don't want other people to know about or to point out. For me, it was, I don't want anyone pointing out that I look like a crazy person or that I have these tattoos, whatever it was. And, but those were aspects about myself that I felt were really important. So I wanna now turn to sexual shame. Now that we kind of have an idea how shame can perpetuate in so many different ways, well, sexual shame can, I mean, it's so insane, it's so great in our society, um, it's so profound how many people it affects. I'm affected, you're affected. The work that I do is like barely scratches the surface. I work with so many people, I have such a blessed job in the sense that I get to work with people and they come into my space with me and we get to work on these very challenging concepts that many of us, most of us, have from a very young age been taught. So it's so broad I don't even know where to begin honestly but let's start with things like slut shaming. Let's start there. Women are shamed for wanting to be sexual. Women are shamed for having sexual desires, for having multiple partners, for having casual sex, for not identifying as heterosexual, for being polyamorous, for having, even if they're serial monogamous relationships, having those types of relationships. Women get shamed for so many aspects of sexuality. This doesn't mean that men don't get shamed. And of course, this, you know, women and men aren't the only two genders. The trans community, extreme shame, um, agendered people, they don't even, they don't even get acknowledged. So I just want to, I just want to talk about that right there. You know, I'm talking about women, how women get shamed. But as I'm doing that, it's important to recognize like all of these other people are not being addressed in that, in that conversation, which is fine because I am going to address everybody, men, women, transgender, individuals, agendered people, everybody has had to deal with some form of shame because in this country, in the United States where I live and where I was born and raised, there we live under an umbrella of Christianity, in quotes, which basically teaches us Christianity the way that it's traditionalized in this country is no sex before marriage. Now, a lot of people aren't doing the, that. In the bigger cities where I've lived, San Francisco, New York, Los Angeles, Portland, 
there you see a lot more single people, older single people, or people coupled up that are not married, or a variety of different lifestyles. However, if you go to the smaller towns, the more rural places in the United States, people are getting married quite young. It is still believed that you must have sex only within marriage. And this is kind of the basis. I made a documentary film in 2018 and I interviewed some friends of mine who identify as gay and one was raised Mormon and in his culture, in his community, Mormon community, as a youngin, he was basically told that uh, masturbation was basically sinful. They were encouraged to shower um, without ever looking at, at their genitals. So we've grown up with body shame around our genitals. We've grown up with shame around the natural feelings and desires that we have, i.e. masturbation. This particular person was telling me also about the intense amount of shame about homosexuality. So that's another thing that we grow up deep shame around. Um, we grow up around shame if you don't identify as male or female. If you are a female and you don't have feminine traits and you're a male and you don't have masculine traits, we grow up around a lot of shame around that. We are constantly being punished for living outside of these very rigid, rigid, rigid norms that we've been given. If we stray even a little bit on the outside, we are ostracized, we are punished. There are severe consequences, both societally, religiously, from your family, from your friends, if you don't toe the line. And that is where shame comes in. And I am sorry to say this. Actually, I'm not sorry. Sorry, not sorry. This is how small of a window we are given. And our sexuality and our gender spans like this. It's so infinite. It cannot be confined to these, these walls. We are fluid by nature. We are curious. We are, pleasure is our birthright. Right? So we should be able to experience joy and pleasure and all of these things that we have not been given permission to experience and pleasure. So we live this life in the shadows. We are afraid to come out if we're gay. We're afraid to come out if our gender doesn't line up with our genitalia. We're afraid to come out if we want to have multiple relationships. We're afraid to come out if we want to wear our hair a certain way. We're afraid to come out if we want to pursue a dream career. We're afraid to come out if we have sex for money. We are afraid of so many things. We are living in shame. And then what does that do? We're acting in a way that we're hiding aspects of ourselves. So at the very fundamental level, we're not showing up as our true authentic self. 99% of the time. Because we're not allowed to. There are severe consequences if we do. So, I know this video is getting long and I don't want to make it any longer. So today I'm going to keep it kind of short. I just want to recognize that shame is, is pervasive in our society, particularly about sexuality, which is what this channel is about, gender and relationships, sex, gender and relationships. There's a lot of shame. We live in a perpetually coupled society like couplehood is revered if you're not in a couple there's something wrong with you so I, I just want to point out all of these levels and over the next this is going to be my shame series so over the next course of the rest of the year I'm going to be tackling some aspect of shame in these videos so stay tuned and 
I would love to hear from you if you want to tell me um, any stories feel free to make those in the comment feel free to email me directly my email address is mo which is mou I'll put it down below also mo mou at la sex therapist.com feel free to email me any questions any stories and I will incorporate them into the series you may also in the comments below ask me questions one thing that I didn't mention today was sexual abuse a lot of times in the sex positive community we focus on celebrating sexuality but there's always consent involved and I think it's really important to bring in the topic of sexual abuse because it can bring about a lot of shame for a lot of people so mine is a safe place for you to talk about any sexual abuse that you've experienced if you send me an email it's going to be a 100 percent confidential the other thing is infidelity feel free to send me anything that you feel that you want to share about infidelity infidelity comes from shame we cheat on our partners because we don't have the language to talk about human sexual nature, which is not necessarily monogamous by nature. Monogamous is beautiful. Monogamous is great. Monogamy is something that we can commit to because we love someone and we want to build a life with them. But it's not necessarily the norm for everybody. And so we don't we shouldn't feel shame when we have desires outside of our monogamous relationship that's normal so I want to just I'm just touching on little bits and pieces I want to hear from you so please email me again mo mou at la sex therapist.com please send me your comments below let me know what questions you have Let's talk about shame. Let's talk about sex. Let's talk about your gender. Let's talk about your relationship status. Let's talk about your sexual abuse. Let's talk about your infidelity. Let's start unraveling all of these ways that we have felt and experienced shame in our life and, and, and start living in ways that make us feel more connected to ourselves, more connected to one another, more connected to this earth, that we have a very short time on earth. Let's live it to the fullest and try to live with as much authenticity, authenticity, generosity, kindness, respect for one another, respect for Mother Nature, respect for ourselves, and, and come together and disband shame. But it starts first with ourselves, right? So let's, let's do that. I want to hear from you. Reach out to me. And let's, let's be in touch. Stay tuned for the next episode on shame coming out every week. All right, I'll talk to you soon. Bye. The Sex Talk. The Sex Talk.